I bless you all on this day as we commemorate the Holy Cross, that we bring the cross into our midst as a staff of support and strength in the beginning of the ecclesiastical year this month so that we would know how it is that we are to walk, how it is that we are to be in this world. I was reading from the Gospel of John the other day some of these same passages that we just read this morning. I was thinking about Peter, the Apostle, and why he denied the Lord. In some cases, it's clear to a degree that there was something about his denial that had, that had a lot to do with fear. He saw where the Lord was going towards the cross and was afraid. There's something else about it, though, that I think he saw where the Lord was going, and this is why in one of the Gospel accounts when the Lord talks about how he has to go towards the cross, and Peter says no. Not only because of fear, but because he was ashamed. To think that his master would be publicly executed in that way. That he would be stripped of his clothing. That he would be beaten beyond recognition and held up in front of everyone as an example that there is no king but Caesar. That's why Pilate writes the inscription on the cross, the king of the Jews, because he is communicating to the Jews you have said to me, we have no king but Caesar, and this is proof. Behold your king, he is dead. We killed him. There is no triumph of righteousness in the earth. There is no exaltation of goodness anywhere. There is only the might of the Roman authority. That is all that there is. There is no truth. That's why Pilate is able to ask that when the Lord says to him that those who love the truth hear his voice, those who know the truth hear him. Pilate says, what is truth? For him, truth is power. And that's all it is. In our world today, in this election season, the lust for power is enormous. The desire to have it, the desire to wield it over others. In the liturgy of St. Basil, there's a prayer, Father Stephen Friedman mentions this in one of his articles, that in St. Basil's liturgy, he says, Lord, make the evil good by your goodness. Be good so that the evil would become good. Be merciful, be compassionate, be kind. But Father Stephen says, I think that we would often want to change that prayer to just make the evil be good. Force them, make them behave. And again, when we do this, we bring our own selves into condemnation. Because we ourselves are sinners before God, imploring Him for mercy with every single breath and recognizing the degree to which we fall in any given day. Even at times, as soon as we've opened our eyes, we know this. And yet we feel comfortable imploring God to saying, make them be good. Perhaps we can elect someone that will force them to be good. Perhaps we can arm ourselves and figure out ways to keep the world under the sway of our power and then everything will be okay. And so in doing so, we say the same thing to our leaders 
But the Jews said to Caesar, the Jews said to Pilate so long ago, we have no king but the President of the United States. There is no Lord over us except the President of the United States. There is no one in authority over us except our political leaders. And this is why as Orthodox Christians we relativize our faith. We make it something that's private and compartmentalized, that has very little influence in the way that we behave or the way that we encounter others or the things that we do in our life. And so that there is almost no difference other than the fact that people show up here for a token amount of time on a Sunday morning. There's very little difference between our lives and the lives of the most secular, progressive, agnostic in America. There's very little difference. In many cases, there is perhaps no difference. Because we relativize our faith. We worship other things. We worship power. The cross demonstrates for us today and what the Gospel of John is it pains to communicate is the irony of everything that is being said, everything that is happening. They say we have no king but Caesar, and so King Caesar says, true, you have no king but me, and I've proved it by killing your king. This is what Pilate says. But what is actually going on? What is actually happening in the Gospel of John? What does the Lord say about what is occurring as he ascends the cross? He says, now the ruler of this world is driven out. Now the Father is glorified. Now the glory of God is manifest. Now every structure of power in creation that tries to hold on to itself and cling to its authority by separating itself from God and trying to find life outside of Him is completely undermined and made of no effect and completely nullified by the power of the cross, by the power that is manifest in the only sinless one, solely out of love, ascending the cross for our salvation. So that all authority, all dominion, all might is revealed as genuinely belonging only to the living God, only to the Father, His begotten Son, and the Spirit proceeding from the Father. This is where all dominion and might and glory belong. This is where our only allegiance belongs in this life. This is where our only hope can be placed, is in the Holy Trinity who saves us. And so may the Lord lead us along the path of repentance, lead us to a place where we no longer are filled with fear or anxiety but we hear his word to us and believe it when he says to us, take heart, I have overcome the world by ascending the cross, by being crucified for you, by rising from the dead and ascending to be seated at the right hand of the Father. Amen. Amen.